and you're perfect for the role. Yeah, I don't have to change the way I talk. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the best examples of replacement cast members who inherited a role mid-Broadway run and made it their own. Oh, in an instant, and who I was has disappeared. Number 10, George Hearn, Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Stephen Sondheim's musical of Victorian-era cannibalism opened at New York's Eurus Theater in 1979, with Len Carew as the title character. What happened then? Well, that's the play, and he wouldn't want us to give it away. Not Sweeney. After over a year, Carew left the show in 1980, and George Hearn stepped in. His memorable performance would be revived on tour and in the 1982 film version of the show, alongside original star Angela Lansbury. This would effectively make Hearn's chilling and hearty take the first glimpse that many non-native New Yorkers got of the homicidal barber. Pretty women sitting in the window, standing on the stairs. He would play the role several times again in concert, memorably paired with another Broadway luminary, Patti Lupone. Because the lives of the wicked should be made brief for the rest of us, death will be a relief. We all deserve to die. Number 9. Bernadette Peters, A Little Night Music. Although Catherine Zeta-Jones won a Tony for her role as Desiree Armfelt in the lackluster 2009 revival of this Sondheim show, Bernadette Peters was a noted breath of fresh air as her replacement. I must meet your life. Yes, the difference in quality was marked by Variety critic Stephen Suskin, who began his review with the phrase, quote, what a difference a diva makes. Peters, along with legendary co-star Elaine Stritch, entered the show six months into its run and gave it a shot in the arm. Liaison. What's happened to them? Liaison. By then, Peters was a master interpreter of composer Stephen Sondheim's work, and her take on the role and its signature song is notably subtler. Where are the clouds? Send in the clouds. Number 8. Marin Maisie and Jason Danieli, Next to Normal. Once the lauded original cast left Next to Normal in July 2010, performers Marin Maisie and Jason Danieli headlined the production. This musical is a challenging show, both thematically and vocally. Its rock-infused score and emotional content requires accomplished performers. Being married in real life, Maisie and Daniel Lee brought a new and shattering dimension to the roles of Diana and Dan, a couple struggling through grief and mental illness. We've been, you know, wanting to work together on Broadway for a long time, and finally we get the chance to do it in such a magnificently uh, orchestrated show. That's been really an exciting part of it, playing opposite each other. Reviewers were delighted by their casting. Despite the emotional ground covered by original cast members Alice Ripley and J. Robert Spencer, Maisie and Daniel Lee managed to unearth even more complexity. Number 7. Rob McClure something rotten. While Brian Darcy James originated the Shakespeare-hating Nick Bottom in the original cast, Rob McClure earned heaps of praise for his spirited take on the role. And then, what, out of nowhere he just starts singing? Yes! <laughs> Entertainment Weekly even politely suggested McClure's was the better showing. Taking over from James in 2016, McClure stayed with the show until its closing before taking the show on its national tour. We don't want to stop. Long enough, not not long, long enough, yeah. I don't want to stop. Do you want to stop? I don't. I would, I would do anything to just keep doing this show for as long as humanly possible. I hear they're doing a tour. You want to go on tour? His performance is the one many theatergoers saw live. Some fans prefer McClure's softer, less angry take on the character. Whether or not you prefer one over the other, they're wildly different interpretations of the role, and it might just come down to a matter of taste. 
And that's another thing I hate about Shakespeare Is all the twits who bloviate about Shakespeare And how they prattle on about his great accomplishments Well, la dee da dee da Number 6. Vanessa Williams, Kiss of the Spider Woman after icon Cheetah Rivera originated the character of Aurora, the so-called Spider-Woman, she left her replacement with some big, dazzling dancing shoes to fill. I'm so very glad to share this good advice. You've got to learn how not to be where you are. In 1994, Vanessa Williams was a chart-topping singer trying to establish herself as an actress, and she made her Broadway stage debut in the role. While contemporary reviews noted the character's dancing was less vigorous, highlighting the singing more, this felt like a necessary and welcome change to accommodate Williams' skills. She was so good in the role that the production received a critically acclaimed second cast album, just to showcase her and her fellow replacement cast members. But if you want to get my attention, let's make Number 5. Sarah Bareilles, Waitress Tony winner Jessie Mueller was Broadway's first Jenna, but since then she's been played by some of the industry's best and brightest. Yet there's something so satisfying and so profound about watching the show's composer, Sarah Bareilles, in the role. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back for a chance to start over, rewrite an ending or two. Her personal connection to the words she wrote is clear, and the show's bubbly, warm humor is a great match for her years as a pop star. That reminds me of a thing we would say Me and my mama in the kitchen when we'd bake She'd say, Jenna, you could tell a whole story with a taste. In 2023, her interpretation was forever cemented in the filmed production. In a lot of ways, Waitress served as a soft launch for the pop singer-songwriter's revamping as a theater star. Make it up and surprise them Tell them all my secrets but disguise them So they dance Number 4. Fantasia Barino, The Color Purple with its soaring songs and story of a woman reclaiming her agency after years of hardship and abuse, The Color Purple is a demanding show for a novice performer. Take a deep breath. I'm gonna hold my head up. I'm gonna put my shoulders back and look you straight in the eye. American Idol winner Fantasia Barino may have been a successful singer, but she was untested as a stage actor when she made her Broadway debut in the role of Seeley. Replacing LaShawns in 2007, the announcement that she was taking over the role spurred a huge surge in ticket sales. And I'm What's more, she was, by all accounts, incredible in the show. She's so well thought of that nearly 15 years later, she made another debut, this time as a film actress, in the 2023 Hollywood adaptation of the musical. Number 3. Leah Michelle, Funny Girl it seems like the Glee actress has been auditioning for the role of Fanny Bryce since her Rachel Berry days. At long last, she played the role made famous by Barbara Streisand on the Broadway stage. But that chance came in an unexpected way. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comer. I simply gotta march my heart to drummer. Don't bring around a clown to rain on my parade. The talented but miscast Beanie Feldstein didn't impress in the role. And after weeks of speculation, Michelle was announced as her replacement. Face the facts, you don't got it. You think beautiful girls are gonna stay in style forever? Her vocals were noteworthy, and the media coverage ended up rescuing the seemingly doomed production from an early closing. It's hard to ignore that Funny Girl is the show Michelle was born to headline. No more hunger and thirst, but first be a person. 
In an incredibly unconventional but unsurprising move, it's Michelle on the production's cast album and not the star who opened the run. Wait, they're gonna hear a voice, a silver flute. They'll cheer each toot. Hey, that kid is terrific, huh? When I expose it. Number two, Reba McIntyre, Annie Get Your Gun. Bernadette Peters opened the 1999 revival of this tried-and-true Irving Berlin classic, but it was country star Reba McIntyre who endeared herself to a whole new group of fans. But a man never trifles with gals who carry rifles, so you can't get a man with a gun, with a gun, with a gun. People were comparing her deft and hilarious take on Annie Oakley to some of the best acting they'd ever seen in a musical. Reba may have drawn on her experience playing Oakley in a TV movie, but doing eight shows a week and following one of Broadway's biggest stars was a whole new ball game. Um, yes, I can. No, you can't, can't, can't. Yes, I can, can, can. It was a challenge she was clearly game for. Audiences who were lucky enough to see her in the show still talk about it to this day. Still I think I'm a lucky girl. I've got the sun in the morning and the moon night. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pearl Bailey – Hello, Dolly Carol Channing would forever be linked with the role of Dolly Levi, the matchmaking widow of Yonkers. However, she was followed in the show's original Broadway run by legends like Ginger Rogers, Ethel Merman, and Betty Grable. But few made the role their own, like Pearl Bailey, who led the show for two years alongside an African-American cast. Due to the strength of the cast and Bailey's anchoring performance, the original production of Hello, Dolly! became one of the few to record a second cast album. Bailey brought a delightfully bombastic energy to the role. She was so good, she was awarded a special Tony Award despite not being in the show's opening night. Who was your favorite Broadway replacement? Tell us in the comments. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.